We have traveled all over Kenya to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the help they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and build profitable businesses. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice, while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepa. Today we are in Deya, Kiambu County. And we are meeting a very experienced farmer with a very big shamba. But there's still room to learn more. Okay, so let's go and see what's on today's Shamba, shamba Shepa. Coming up, we'll be discussing green maize. Talking about soil erosion thinking in a new way about farm insurance and we'll be making a kitchen garden out of an old bag. Today's farmer is Moses Jiriri. Moses has half of his shamba at his home in Ndeya, Kiambu County and the other half which extensively grows maize just down the road closer to Limuru. An experienced farmer, Moses has been cultivating since 1994. His farm is a family project and Moses gets help from his wife Wangoi and his son Charles. Also on his shamba, you will find avocados, kales, cabbages and spinach. Time now to meet Moses. Moses. Hey. Hi. This is a beautiful, beautiful shamba. Yes. yes. Well done. Thank you. How long have you been farming? Uh, at about uh, 30 years or so. What has been your challenges so far? Sincerely, there has been a lot of challenges. Oh. When starting farming, I had no cash. Now, I can say something to say I have. Mm -hmm. Because you can see there are a lot of avocados here, mm -hmm. whereby I get cash for my daily expenses. Mm -hmm. so the rains have been a challenge. It has been a challenge. And what else in the shamba has been a challenge? The soil. Mm -hmm. uh, the soil is unproductive. Uh -huh. yeah. The yeah. nutrients. The nutrients yes. I, I don't know, I'm seeing like the land is a bit sloppy. Are you experiencing any problems with the erosion? Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to be done as far as soil erosion is concerned. Yes. yes. Now, I, I, I learned somewhere that you I also a trainer. Are you? Yes, I can. I, I have been doing that to my area farmers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have been training them on uh, the little I have. All mm -hmm. right. Yeah, they are sharing my knowledge. So from our experts and from the uh, knowledge that you know, we can mix it together and we both learn from each other? Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. And now, right. because we have a lot of work to do, I mean, we need to get to work. We need to yeah. pitch our tent. Of course, yes. We'll see you later. Okay, thanks. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll see thank you later. You. Thank you. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, thanks. All right. Ah, the team gets quick at this every time. You know, Caro, mm -hmm. I've been thinking, I've got this brilliant idea how we can communicate in the shamba. All right. Now, you've got your phone? Of course, yes. And you've got my phone number. So now, Tony, what you do... Tony, mm -hmm. I don't have your phone number. You don't have my phone number? No, and, and why would I want to have your phone number? Seriously, you don't have my phone I number? I don't. She doesn't have my phone number. <laughs> All right, let's find out who our first expert of the day is. There goes my idea. Moses grows his maize on land just a short drive down the road from his farm in Limuru. Joseph Mburu is an agricultural consultant from Aishamba. And he's here to see just how Moses grows his maize. Mr. Mburu. Hi. Ah, I forgot. There are two Mburus. Yes. So I'll address you as Moses. Moses Jeriri Boru. And I'll address you as Joseph. Yes. All you right. Can call me Joseph. Let me start now with Moses. Yeah. Moses, you are a maize farmer. Yes. How long have you been planting maize? I've been planting maize since 1994. Wow. Yeah. That's long. Yeah, of course. How has it been so far? There have been challenges due to rain, uh -huh. shortage of rain. Yes. And sometimes the pattern. 
Yeah. You see, uh, like now, there is rain, very little, and we have been told there there will be plenty of rain. Yeah. So those things are affecting us as far as mis growing is concerned. But you've never given up. Sincerely, I've never. You can see what I've done here. I can see that. Yeah. They look beautiful. They yes. look good. How do you sell your maize? Sincerely, what I do, because of weather, I first sell the first crop, this the first crop mm -hmm. for for green market. Ah. And the, the rest over, like this one, mm -hmm. I do it for storage. Okay. Yes. Now, Joseph. What is the advantage of having the green market for maize? The green market is good because you are able to get money early in the season. If you are harvesting, waiting to harvest dry maize, you'll have to wait for so many months. Mm -hmm. The other advantage is that sometimes when uh, rain is not enough, like now, you'll have some maize which you can sell whereas you'll have very little if you wait until mm. they dry mm -hmm. yes and i'm sure with all those advantages there must be at least one disadvantage yeah there is not only one really but the main one is especially for the small scale farmers if you sell all your maize green and you don't save your money you are likely to run short of uh, food and ah. so yeah. we don't encourage small-scale farmers to sell all their maize mm -hmm. while it is still green so Moses when yeah. the buyer comes to your shamba and wants yeah. to buy maize yes what is he looking for you know these brokers buying maize they like them, themselves so so much so what they're after is for the big maize. Ah. Like this one now. Yes. You see, they look at for the big maize so as they can face a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And even myself, I'll sell it in a good price, yeah? Yes. To take me going to the next level, waiting for the others to dry up. Uh -huh. do, yes. do, do they check the inside? Of course, yeah, they does. They just open it and see how, how the it maize looks it, like. is, it, it looks like. You can see like, like this one. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yes. Waiting for... Uh, to be sold, mm -hmm. yeah. And is there a time when they reject it? Sincere when it's it's hard, but now the, as it's soft, mm -hmm. it is best for the market. So remember, don't sell all of your maize when green. To make sure your food security for you and your family, and also as the price of dry maize rises sharply as the season goes on, we recommend to dry and properly store the rest of the maize you have grown with proper storage. Your maize will keep for a good amount of time. Wow! Thanks, Joseph, for giving us this expert advice on maize. Let me see what Caro is up to. Yes? Hey, Caro! Hey, who's this? What? What, what? what do you mean, who is this? <laughs> I, I, I work with you. We, we work together. Oh, Tony. Finally, finally. Can you save that number, please? Oh, okay. I'll save it. I wanted to know, what's the next story? Ah, good question. And this is the next story. Ndeya in Kiambu County is renowned for its cold and damp climate. Whilst on the whole, that remains true. The area, just like any other, is prone to soil erosion. Charles is Moses' son and he's already learned a lot about how to prevent soil erosion. So Charles, yeah. how long have you been farming and helping around in the Shamba? It's around 15 to 10 years. 15 to 10 yeah. years? Why did you think of farming? I mean, so many young people are now thinking about other forms of business. Maybe some are in college, others mm. are in, you know, different aspects of life. Why did you decide you want to farm? Okay, one thing, uh, many youths never like being into the shamba. Mm -hmm. And another thing is that uh, farming is, is actually cool yeah compared to other things you find it cool yeah, yeah. so do you love this idea that uh, we follow in the footsteps of our parents because your father has been farming for so long yeah that's the best thing because uh, if, if actually my father like now if he's not around mm -hmm. actually this shamba can't be the way it is mm -hmm. yeah so it's good to follow up 
-hmm. Yeah, to at least bring up another generation, generation and so, another image. Wow. Because you actually things are changing. So, uh, this particular piece of land. Yeah. Uh, we were discussing it and you're saying it's a bit sloppy. What, yeah. What's happening here? Yeah, uh, during the rainy seasons, mm -hmm. uh, there, there, there is soil erosion. Yeah. But we try to curb the soil erosion by planting top, top plants mm -hmm. and actually digging ditches. Digging ditches? Yeah. Um, like now you can see, mm -hmm. you can see the level is not the same. Yeah, when you look that side, yeah. it's a bit high. Yeah, it's a bit high. Uh -huh. You come low, uh -huh. the way it goes so like that. So you're making something like uh, terraces? Yeah, terraces uh -huh. to curb soil erosion. All right, yeah. that is good. Yeah. To stop soil from washing away and to keep your farm fertile, we recommend construction of terraces. Terraces can be made by digging a trench and throwing the soil uphill. The embankment formed by the soil is held in place by planting grasses like napier on top. This napier grass can also be used for feeding livestock. In addition to reducing soil erosion, terracing will help to hold the water on your land, which will be taken by the crops. So uh, this, this is a new season. Yeah, so do you we, normally just plant the same, same uh, uh, type of crops in the same particular piece of land? No, we actually deal with crop rotation. Crop rotation? Yeah, in ah. order to keep the soil healthy. So when you say crop rotation, you mean, uh, what exactly do you mean? Okay, right now, Mm -hmm. there, there are those plants like beans, legumes, mm -hmm. they do provide the soil with nitrogen. Mm -hmm. So if you plant once, like now you plant beans now, mm -hmm. the other time you come and plant vegetables. Mm -hmm. The vegetables will do well because the soil already have, is rich in nitrogen. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Charles. Yeah. That's very uh, good information. Yeah. And I wish you well in your future endeavors in the Shamba. <laughs> right? I'm happy to meet you. All right. so. Okay. Yeah. You can go. Hey, Caro. Yes, Tony? Aha, finally. Yes, it's me. <laughs> so, where are you? I miss you. Oh, I miss you too. And I'm on my way right back to the homestead. Ah, good. I'll see you soon. Okay. <laughs> And I'll see you soon, right after the break. Still to come on Shamba Shape Up, Moses finds out how insurance can change his farm. And a great way to grow fresh food from an old bag. You are back on Shamba Shape Up. We are in Deia in Kiambu County and we are checking out Moses Njiriri's Shamba. Coming up, we'll be looking at a great way of making a kitchen garden using very little space. But there's still lots of work to be done on this Shamba. So, who's our next expert of the day? Climate change is affecting the way we farm from day to day. So, what happens if crops are wiped out and all is lost? Well, as always, there are solutions. Joseph Shege is a portfolio manager from Acre Africa and is changing the way we think about farm insurance. Would you like to tell me the process where, where to start to be insured? When you want to buy this insurance product for crop insurance, yes. you will come to us. When you come to us either through an agent or you can go to uh, any nearest branch of these insurance companies, yeah. then the insurance company will send an um, agronomist who will come to visit your farm yeah. and do the assessment. Then during the cropping season, uh, the insurance company again will come to do another inspection okay. to see whether you are adhering to good agricultural practices. Yes. You see, this is a contract between you and insurance company. Okay. Clearly, it's an agreement. Yes. Clearly telling you, we are selling you this promise. Yeah. If the season is bad, and your yields are um, uh, reduced, yeah. we'll be able to come and take you to where you expected to be. Okay. So make sure that you get the policy documents and then that it's a clear indication that you're on cover. You can ensure the cost of production. Yeah. That is the mother that you're putting in your farming activities. Yes. The other option is expected revenue. At the end of the season, yes. you're expecting to harvest and then sell this harvest. This yes. is the revenue that you're expecting to get. Of course, yes. Assuming like in this farm, how much money do you, do you incur per season? About 50,000 or so. 50,000 in one acre. Yeah. So that option, you multiply by the rate that I talked about, between 4% yes. to 5%. Okay. So that means you'll pay uh, 4% of 
the amount 50000 50, so okay. it is very much affordable almost equivalent to the cost of buying one bag of fertilizer thank you so uh, Joe, what you're trying to say is that this is completely affordable to farmers yes it is completely affordable there is usually that confusion whereby people think the only people who can buy or farmers who can buy insurance are yes. large scale commercial farmers. Yeah. But even for smallholder farmers, yes. as uh, low as 2.5 acres, or even one acre, can afford this insurance solution. So that means when your farm is hit by these risks, yes. then you get a compensation uh, based on the two options we talked about either expected revenue, where you wanted to be, or the amount of money that you've put in a farming activity. Okay, wow, that's it's how good. it works. Ah, it's good. Oh. Let us look at an example of what it would cost Moses to ensure his expected revenue income from his maize crop against loss. It costs Moses 100,000 shillings per year to grow his maize. If everything grows to plan, Moses expects to earn 150,000 shillings in a year from his maize. Based on Moses' details, he can expect to pay a premium rate of 7% in order to ensure his expected revenue costs from his maize crop. This would mean that he has to pay 7% of 150,000 shillings. This equals 10,500 shillings per year or 875 shillings a month. In case Moses' maize crop is destroyed, the insurance company will pay him enough money so that he won't lose out on his expected income from the maize, that is 150,000 shillings. To find out more about agricultural insurance, you can connect to us through iShamba. SMS the word JOIN to 21606. Paul's idea is a researcher from Agricultural Research Institute in Morogoro, Tanzania. He's here to show us how kitchen gardens are a great way to grow easily accessible nutritious food, not just in Ashamba, but anywhere. Ah, there you are, Paul. I'm looking for you. Take us to the kitchen garden. Huh? Oh, Ton, this is a kitchen garden. Wait, wait. This. This one. is a kitchen garden. Yes, I'm yes. seeing stones. I'm seeing sack. I'm seeing soil. I'm seeing a stick poking out. Yeah. Tell me, Moses. Yeah, is he joking with me? Is this uh, a kitchen garden? This is a kitchen garden. I don't yes. believe it. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait to see. So, Paul. Yes. I want to see you build this in front of my own eyes. Can you do it? Yes, Ton. I can do it. With a little bit of help, Paul starts to make his kitchen garden. Paul has already prepared a mixture of soil and manure to fill up the sack. The soil mix is then added to the sack. A container is filled with stones, then raised once a layer of soil is at the same height. The container separates the soil from the stones and helps when the water is added in later. This process is repeated until the sack is full. So how much water do we need? Uh, actually, Tony, that it depends on uh, the dryness of your soil. Like this one is too dry, so we'll need up to three buckets, which is uh, 20 liter each. Always, beginning is not easy. Yeah. Yeah. So at first you need a lot of water. Yes. Like uh, 60 or 80 liters. Mm -hmm. But thereafter, you'll be watering once a week, only 20 liters, ah. the whole week. Ah, wow. uh, but also, because this is a kitchen garden close to the kitchen, yes. uh, those uh, waste water from the kitchen might also be used here. Well, I can see this bag is already full of water. The next step is planting. You prepare your seedlings. Can I have that knife to cut these uh, long roots mm -hmm. in order to be uniform? Mm -hmm. So as when you plant, they go straight to the soil. Because our farm is not big, we have to use a stake yes. to plant. Can you give me a, a small stake there? Okay, this one. We start planting one by one. That's, that's like your jembe. Yeah, right? of course. Yes, this is my jembe in this small farm of mine. Mm -hmm. It goes down. 
You press it. You don't mind about space. You uh, just, uh, I'm measuring. I'm measuring as you see as I go. Uh -huh. I'm used. You are used yeah, to. Yeah, I'm used to mm. it. The eye. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yes. Other varieties. Mm. I go now to Skuma Wiki. Mm. After yes. that, we can go side by side. Still. Give me that knife. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, so it's, it's not enough. It's not top. enough. You can yeah. Still go on. You can yeah. still go on. Yeah. yeah. You can see I'm doing it. Uh -huh. Then after that, you do a bit of watering. Uh, you can see what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. In so doing, yes, we wait our crop to grow and I hope next time when you come mm. you shall have plenty of vegetables to be fed my family and you as you visit us. Ah. Mm. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you. When planting crops in the kitchen garden sack, remember to space the plants correctly. About five centimeters or three fingers apart. And of course, you can fill up all the available space on the sides of the sack to grow as much fresh food as you can. I know much about kitchen garden because it's one way of uh, preserving water. And even due to, the, to this area of ours, it's a semi-arid area. When time comes for this, like, uh, like now the hot season, still can get vegetables to feed your family. Moses does a wonderful job on his shamba. However, today we have helped him understand how to be more productive with his maize. Educated him on agricultural insurance. And how he can grow with little space, effort and time with a kitchen garden. Carol. Yes. Have you saved my number? Oh, of course, yes, Tony. Would you believe I don't have your number? Finally. I have your number. Mm -hmm. I've always Can you imagine we've been working together for a long, long time and she didn't have my number? You have not shared it, your numbers? I give her, I don't know what she does with it. Do you believe him? Do you think I would honestly not Sometimes have told his number? I can see as if he's a liar. <laughs> he's a lying, bit. he's yeah. lying. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. So <laughs> how did you enjoy the ship up to I really, really enjoyed. This shamba has been amazing. Tony, have you seen such a large mass of maize in your life? No, yeah, it was beautiful. That yeah. was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah. He's done a very, very good job. And the avocado trees. Mm, not mm -hmm. forgetting that he's still an expert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On his own right. So, Thank you. Moses, yes. we were here as Shamba Shepa. Yes. We brought to you experts yes. and we had some moments with you. Now tell us, what stood out for you? First and foremost, you are lovely people. Thank I you. like you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thanks Keep it up. Uh -huh. Thank you. So Thank now, Moses, yeah. yes. you're not only going to be selling your maize when they're still green, but you'll also be now storing. Sincerely, uh, yes. That would be, is that, isn't that a nice but, thing? You know, mm. as we are concerned, uh, me, uh, selling green maize mm -hmm. is good because in first and foremost, you know after waiting for four months, you need something to pocket mm -hmm. in order to wait them for them to dry so as you can store them. Mm -hmm. I doesn't sell the, all of them. Mm -hmm. I leave some mm -hmm. for, for, future, for use. future use. So, Moses? Yeah. Tony? Yes. Our work here is done. Our work here is done. And okay. without much further ado, we'll meet you on yeah. the next program of Shamba Shepherd.